Welcome everyone to the presentation about Captain. I'm Giovanni Liva, a Captain maintainer since multiple years. Next to me, there should be another face. You can see here, Anna. Unfortunately, she got sick, but she's with us in our hearts. So today, I would like to talk about why you should use Captain and why Captain is great in day-to-day -day work for you. And the TLDR for this question is to make sure your deployments in Kubernetes simply work. But isn't deploy on Kubernetes very easy? I just need to you know, apply some YAML manifest and then Kubernetes will take care of about everything. It will spawn up the resources to handle the pod and the service and everything should be fine, right? Or if I want to be more production ready, I can set up some GitOps workflow where Argo continuously syncs my manifest from my state repo into my cluster and Argo keeps track of the state changes and everything is done. So deploy on Kubernetes should be easy, right? Right? Well, if you use Argo, I think you saw this quite broken heart a lot. <laughs> and the reason for this uh, <clears throat> application health degraded are multiples. And if you use Kubernetes since quite a lot, you will know that are unlimited the way that you can fail. Some are quite common, like this one. An OCI registry doesn't contain the image, so the container cannot be downloaded. And Kubernetes doesn't know what to do, just it will stuck and do nothing for you. So you need to discover this and try to fix it. Other type of problems instead are much harder to debug because they require knowledge about how the different manifests are related to each other. For instance, if I have a config map mounted as a volume <clears throat> and the config map doesn't exist, then the pod is stuck. Kubernetes doesn't know what to do because the config map doesn't exist. So for you to troubleshoot these type of errors, you need to understand how the different manifests relate to each other, know which config map is mounted in which pod, and check if it exists or not, and find out why it was not created. <clears throat> Other type of errors instead requires much more deeper knowledge about Kubernetes. For instance, whenever there are scheduling error, it requires you to know how the inner details of Kubernetes work. For instance, <clears throat> um, I don't have any more IPs in my cluster. My node doesn't have any more available IPs, so the pod is simply stuck. And in order to understand why this, you need to understand the inner details of Kubernetes, how the networking layer works, in order to figure out, ah, maybe I need to increase my subnet mask. But if you manage to have a successful deployment, doesn't mean that tomorrow everything can fail, because maybe I have an application that connects to an external database, <clears throat> And today I deployed a new version, everything's fine. But tomorrow, another team from another department across the globe, from another part of my organization, apply another set of manifests with some config map or network policies that screw up the connection to the database. Now my application doesn't know what to do, it will crash loop and require a lot of work to understand what went wrong. <clears throat> But besides common troubleshooting problem on Kubernetes when it comes to deployment, there are also issues when it comes to processes. Because after you make a deployment, you also need to understand if the new version of the application that you deployed is healthy. Before, we saw an app degraded from Argo, and that's a definition of application health. But I guess that <clears throat> having the application just running does make much sense for all type of organization. So every type of application has their own different version of application health. And we cannot just rely on pod health to provide that concept. Also, <clears throat> uh, if I know that my application is healthy, I would like to automate the progress of the artifact that comprises my application across different environments because I don't want to manually apply or create PRs across different state repository of Argo in order to promote across different stages. I want to be fast and pro provide the things in production so my customer can make use of those new cool things that we built on. And also, <clears throat> I guess if you try to troubleshoot one of the errors that I showed you before, there are a lot of noise in Kubernetes. There are a ton of events and logs that you need to read through. And it, a goal is to improve the signal to noise ratio in order to know where the problems are in order to focus only on the problems that really matter. And how we can address all of this? Well, we are at KubeCon, so observability is one of the easy guesses. And we are at Captain Talk, so Captain is the second part of it. So if you combine observability and Captain, you can solve all of the previous issues that I present to you. So <clears throat> the first part are quite trivial. With observability, you know the root cause of the failure. 
let's focus more on the process type of issues, like the application health, and not just relying on pod health. So to set the stage, pod health is a concept provided by Kubernetes and usually relies on two special props. You can see on the right-hand side that liveness, which is currently failing. Right? <clears throat> the liveness probe is nothing else than the concept in Kubernetes to say, can I try to restart the pod? I will try to turn it off and on again. Nothing else than that. Whenever there is an issue with the container, Kubernetes just try to restart it. And if the application instead says, ah, I'm live, then Kubernetes will try to also fetch the readiness probe. And if it gets a 200, HTTP 200, then we simply redirect some traffic to it. If it's not a 200, we simply don't do anything. So sounds good. Can't I just use uh, probes to define my application health? Well, that's exactly what Argo does. But <clears throat> what if Argo says my application is healthy, but I just deploy my new version and now the response time for pressing the payment button in my card takes five seconds to load the next page instead of 300 milliseconds. Do you consider that application healthy? I would say no, because slow is the new downtime. So let's set up a stage for a small demo here. I have an awesome application, 0.3.0 comprises of three different microservices. I have a front-end, back-end, and a storage layer. And now I want to deploy the new version where my awesome application 0.3.1 just bump the version of the front-end. And I want to make sure that this deployment works well, there are no issues, and my application is healthy. That means my response time has a good value. And the first thing is, how the, can Captain understand if my does it work? Not really in remote, sorry. How <laughs> can they can understand if my application is comprised of these three microservices? Well, the cool thing is that we set in front of your Kubernetes cluster. So no matter to what to, uh, which tool you're using, you will apply some manifest to the cluster. And all manifests will pass by Captain so we can watch everything which is happening inside your cluster. And this helps us to provide observability out of the box through Prometheus metrics and open telemetry traces, but also create a logical model how the different services and pod belongs together in your cluster, how the different business application are distributed inside your cluster. And we can create this application concept. So we can know those three microservices belong to one specific business application. And how we can do that is through recommended label of Kubernetes. Kubernetes recommended multiple labels for it but we only require three of them and one is optional. So the app Kubernetes IO name is the one that we use in order to identify and give a name to your microservice. Then the version is a nice version if you want to provide it, but if you want to use latest, <coughs> we pick it from your container. And the one that we use in order to relate together different components of your cluster into a business logical app is the part of. If we provide these three labels, then Captain can do all the observability <clears throat> around your deployment and bundle up together a business app. So whenever I deploy from 0 0.3 to 0 0.3.1, I know the diff of that. I know that only the front-end service is now bumping from 2.0 to 2.1. So I can only test the quality of this new service if it makes sense or not in order to prevent slow applications. And how we can check if um, <clears throat> we have a response time which is in some pattern that we expect? Well, we follow the SRE book. For this, the SRE, SRE book sets three different values that you can use. SLI, service level indicator, SLO, service level objective, and SLA, service level agreements. An indicator is nothing else than a metric a signal, something that they can measure from your service. An objective is a goal that they can set on a specific metric. For instance, a metric can be response time, the one of this example, and the goal is should be less than 300 milliseconds. And a cumulative set of objectives can support the SLA, which is an agreement that usually stands for how many nines of uptime do I have in my service. And Thanks for multiple objectives, I can guarantee an uptime or not. And Captain sits right in the middle. It provides you a way to define SLOs and SLIs. And how it does that? Through 
abstracting any observability platform from your Kubernetes cluster. So Captain sits between any observability platform of your choice, fetches the metric from these observability tools, translate them into Kubernetes native metrics API. So every other tool that understand Kubernetes APIs can work with. So I don't need any more point-to-point -point integration. I don't need any more my new tool to be integrated with Prometheus, Dynatrace, Datadog, you name it. We do this abstraction such a way that any tool can integrate with us. And also natively tool of Kubernetes like HPA, Horizontal Pod Autoscaling. <clears throat> So the SLIs are coming from an observability platform that you installed and you maintain. And Captain has some special CRDs where you can define the SLOs. So Captain continuously fetches the metrics from your observability provider, translates that into Kubernetes native metrics, and checks the results of these metrics against some well-defined SLOs that you set. So it's not just that at the first deployment, you validate that, oh, my application is good, but we can continuously monitor this value. Because after you deploy it, a week after, maybe you have a memory leak, so the response time can decrease. So we continuously, continuously monitor that, and you can hook your tool to react upon that. So you can do the day two operation on top of it. <clears throat> so now that I know that my application is healthy, is doing great, I just deployed a new version, how can I promote it across artifact, across environment, sorry. And if you look, normally, a uh, GitOps setup, we have a place where, on the left-hand side, we have a repository. It can be any type of repository. You install Argo or Flux or any other GitOps tool of your choice that is watching the state repository. And whenever there is a change in this repository, the tool will try to sync these changes into your Kubernetes cluster. And since you just installed Captain, now you know that your application is healthy, why don't you just let Captain trigger an action that can bump the version of the artifact in the next environment, in the next repo that controls the stage of the next environment? So for that, <clears throat> Captain knows when an application is being deployed. Since we watch everything happen in your cluster, we know after you deploy your application <clears throat> that all the deployment finished, you run some evaluation that everything is healthy, everything is okay. So we let you hook a container that triggers the promotion. So we just provide you a hook where we provide inside this hook all the contextual information about what was the deployment, all the information about the services being deployed, the evaluation that have been run, the results of them, and then we provide this as an environmental variable to the container that you provide. Why we don't take any opinionated view on the container to run the promotion? Because uh, since a year at KubeCon, we speak a lot with many practitioners and we define that everyone is special. Everyone has their own use case because every company is different. There are legal processes involved for making something up to production. The structure of the organization is different, so we cannot come up with one size fits all. Therefore, we found out we just let the user do what they know best, how to promote the artifacts. We just provide them the context to make informative decisions for it. And this how Captain uh, lets you promote artifacts across the different stages. So now that you have your application automatically being deployed from dev to production, there is an issue. <clears throat> and you need to find out what went wrong, because now you have a lot of logs to fetch and try to read and identify problems. You have a lot of Kubernetes events being generated and you need to find how, how can I process all of them in order to improve the signal to noise ratio, in order to be more effective in addressing problems. And for that, Captain provides lots of metric out of the box. In particular, a subset of the Dora metrics. So you know when uh, you have many successful deployments, when there are failures, what are the versions that are failing, time between deployment. So you can also learn teams inside your organization that are very good in deploying the new cool things into production very quickly. You can learn from them watch their pattern and apply them to other parts of the organization that are more junior to Kubernetes in order to support them and be as effective as the rest of the company. But beside that, Captain also provides you with open telemetry traces that you can ingest in any platform of choice. In this case, in this example, there is Jaeger that shows everything that happened during a deployment of your new version of the application. 
And if we zoom in, when there is an error, I know that in Jaeger the UI is not the best to show this, but if you see in the middle in the text, there is an error equal true. So this trace failed, and we can see in the span events why it fails. And the reason for this is that my response time now is 836 milliseconds, which doesn't meet my criteria of being less than 300 milliseconds. So through traces, you can quickly identify when there is an issue and also know which microservices has this issue. <clears throat> and if you recall a bit back, the example about the application, my awesome application being promoted across stages, we can also <clears throat> um, provide this trace ID across the different environments during the promotion phase. So you can then link the trace parent across stages. So whenever you have a production trace and something went wrong in production, you can drill down back across stages following the different spans in order to understand the process and try to follow, up, to follow why it went wrong, why something from dev reached production and was not good. So you can try to learn from your errors and try to improve the situation for the future. So now that I hopefully help you for Captain, how can you use Captain? Well, the best way to use Captain is just to use our Helm charts and install them. You find all the installation on our website under captain.sh. And as I said before, we monitor everything inside your cluster, which might be a bit of a too high permissions request for many of you. And for that, we don't do that out of the box. You need to opt in into this from Captain. So you need to enable which namespaces Captain should watch for. And for that, it's as simple as adding an annotation about Captain SH slash lifecycle toolkit enabled. If you enable that in any namespace, then we will watch everything just inside those namespaces. And the cool thing is that we are cooking a stable release 2.0, which contains all the goodies that I just talked about. And we are currently have just a release candidate for it. So please try that out, be vocal, tell us what went good, what went wrong in order to polish all the rough edges and make a very perfect stable 2.0 soonish. We are in the CF Slack, but we are also here at the <clears throat> pavilion. And before I conclude, because I'm running out of time, um, there is also some movement around the Captain community. Argo loves Captain. There was also a nice presentation from uh, yesterday about this topic where we are exploring ways how we can better integrate into Argo because Argo and Captain works very well together. Argo does the synchronization, and Captain provides the observability and the tool to promote across stages. So why don't we work together more? And we'd like to hear more about this from the community, about how do you use Argo? How do you see Captain be integrated into Argo better? So please provide also your feedback under this uh, issue 355. It's in the Captain community repo and share your feedback and the way that you envision this merge or this collaboration. And if you want to discuss more about Captain, I am at the Pavilion booth tomorrow in the morning and also Friday in the morning. So thanks a lot and see you at the booth.